how do we solve the problem of talent in the supply chain industry? To talk about that today, I have Robin Bruncher. Mm -hmm. She's an educator at the University of Nevada at Reno. Welcome, Robin. Thank you for joining Thank you. us. Now, tell me a little bit about what your main focus is and, uh, at the University of Nevada at Reno in supply I chain. I will. So I've been in the supply chain industry for 30 years and just started teaching uh, about 18 months ago. And our sole purpose at the University of Reno is to make sure that we are bringing supply chain into our College of Business. Um, as you know, or you may know, we are short on talent. We have a term in our industry now called talent scarcity. Um, this comes for many reasons. Um, for those of us that have been in the trade for quite some time, we went through a retirement phase for those of us that work for large corporations. Uh, we also were part of the great resignation after COVID. And it was uh, apparent that we didn't have, we had not invested in our young, in our youth uh, with regards to this industry enough. Um, so we are uh, focused on doing that now. Right, so I mean, I think we, pretty much every, everybody in the industry agrees that there's a crisis with a, a talent scarcity, as you call it. How did we get here? Well, we got here for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I think uh, in 2018, we were starting to recognize the bench um, not being as full as it should be. Um, with that exception, we still let talent go instead of holding on to those uh, that were 55 and older. Uh, we still let them go, hoping that the backfill of, of young talent would come, and it did not. Um, second reason is we went into COVID. So 85% of consumers learned how to shop online, which drove a lot of throughput. You can imagine our 3PLs were overwhelmed at the time. That then uh, compounded into last mile delivery. So now we are trying to think of ways to uh, complement our package delivery systems with alternatives. Um, some would say that we may uh, be using Uberization uh, to deliver packages over or time. Or drones, perhaps. Yeah. Drones as right. well. Um, the third thing was the technology. So COVID tested our systems and our systems were not at par we had to get better visibility across our supply chains. Um, and, you know, Silicon Valley is working on those types of measures. And you'll see more and more companies taking their homegrown um, software systems and putting them out to the market. And they don't do that for just reasons of profitability. They really do it because some of them work very well. And then finally, sustainability. So whenever you have technology in the supply chain, that's what drives sustainability. Um, there are companies like N0, for example, that go out and measure our company's carbon emissions um, within the supply chain itself. And then that rolls back to the suppliers. Right. So with, four, with those four um, issues going on, what's happening is it's driving up the need not only for more employment, but different employment. Right, more, more specialized, more, there's more training needed because all of these issues like uh, technology and sustainability require a different level of expertise That's correct. Than, than what we typically saw in the past. Yeah. Um, so, um, Robin, can you tell me what companies are focused on right now as they try to address this labor shortage? I can. Um, so companies are dealing first with retention. Those that are actually in the supply chain, primarily operations and not management, are about 29% of them say they would leave the position today. And of those 29%, two reasons. Uh, low wages is one. And the other is not enough flexibility. So 
if you think about that, that's not necessarily being driven just by our youth. It's being driven post COVID um, because people learn to be efficient and effective without necessarily being on site. So that's, that's one thing. Um, they're also thinking about um, reskilling those that are currently uh, in that mode of not wanting to leave, wanting to learn new things. So you mentioned drones, for example. This would be something that maybe an outbound um, operator would be interested in learning more about, right? So that requires technology skills or technical skills. It requires um, engineering to work more with logistics in making sure that it's a viable option. Um, and it's all for the greater good of higher efficiencies, lower cost. Um, sure. HR is getting very creative. Um, that's if the company still maintains their own human resources. A lot of outsourcing has occurred. So there's a danger when there's outsourcing for the sole um, purpose of human resource um, uh, adherent if they don't know the world of supply chain and they're a supply chain company. So in those cases, there might be a gap in being able to identify and retain the right skill set. Um, irregardless, we've got about 1.3 million job openings today. And by 2029, we expect to have 600,000 more. I've heard people say that one of the, the one of the ways to help this problem is to focus on how cool some of the technology is to work on. Is has that been your experience? Do you think that's a glimmer of hope in the, in that? I would absolutely agree. So, um, what I think there's a misconception out there. First of all, our supply chain industry has a branding issue. Um, we are known for truck drivers and forklift operators, uh, when really what we're looking for are engineers and high tech, right? Um, and you're right, the shiny tech gets the most attention. And that's what our younger folks are looking to do. Um, Power BI, for example, or even technology that drives traceability. The interesting part is that technology companies are becoming more supply chain savvy as they try and solve for things in our industry. So so do you think that the, the business community is up to the challenge? How, how, how do you see things moving forward? Yeah. And, and please talk a little bit about uh, what the University of Nevada is Absolutely. doing in this area. And also yeah. some of your story, which sounds very interesting. First of all, I'll, I'll shine a light on the example of University of Arkansas and J.B. Hunt, uh -huh. right? They've been doing this for quite some time and they offer a program that is geographically makes sense for those in the Midwest and the South. Uh, Reno, Nevada is the, nine, the gateway to the nine Western states. We say 11 now, uh, but to the Western states. And what that means is that we can transport in a two-day time frame, a package from Reno, Nevada to anywhere on the West Coast. So that being the standard, uh, we have a lot of companies that are moving in to Nevada for the benefit of tax and inventory uh, relief. Um, we have Panasonic and Tesla, uh, Aero Electronics, Zulily, quite a few. And we have uh, built over the past 10 years a huge technology park uh, with nothing but warehouses for these products. Um, we had a program um, back in 2010, and I think if you ask any of the long-term business folks in Reno, they would say the worst thing you ever did was get rid of that major. And of course, due to budget cuts, we had to release the program back then. Um, it was also during a recessionary period, so all the, the whole state was affected. Our business community came forward uh, with the generosity and, and for very little money, and I can share how much, they wrote a check for $600,000, um, ITS Logistics, uh, that are headquartered in Reno, for the first three years of the program. 
And the program works like this. Um, it's called a sustainable program, which means that our programs get private funding. So when the governor has to make a decision on July 1st, it doesn't affect us any longer. We are privately funded. My role is threefold. So I build and oversee the program. I do teach um, a portion of the program, and then we have four supply chain experts at the university. Wow. And then uh, the biggest role or the biggest pillar, I think, is getting placement for our graduates. So the University of Reno loses about 30% of our students to Silicon Valley. Our timing is really optimal right now because uh, our students do not want to move to California and get laid off. So we are really introducing them to how they can use that tech technological skill set, uh, information systems, data analytics, and come over to the supply world of supply That's chain. That's fantastic. And mm -hmm. so where would we go to find out more about that? Uh, you can go to uh, two places primarily, itslogistics.com, uh, uh -huh. and you can go to the University of Nevada, Reno.com. Robert, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Thank you. We've been talking today about how to solve the problem of talent in the supply chain industry with Robin Bruncher from the University of Nevada in Reno. Thank you for watching.